Hi guys, it's Camille here and I'm coming to you with 2020 Booker Price Review. Today we are going to talk about one of many debuts on the shortlist, Burnt Sugar by Avni Joshi. Everybody and their mother already reviewed it, so it's my turn now. <laughs> There were only three authors that won Booker Prize with the first novel. That was Kerry Humes with The Bone People in 1985, Aranduti Roy with The God of Small Things in 1997, and George Sanders with Lincoln in the Bardo in 2017. And here comes a bold statement. I think that this one might be the fourth of those. Let's get to it. Uh, you know the drill. We start with uh, general information about the plot, not to spoil you anything, and then we will talk about the main themes, or the most interesting ones, at least to me. If you read Hot Milk by Deborah Levy, you are more or less familiar with the main driver of the plot. A sick mother and a daughter narrating the story. Like in Levy's Hot Milk, this is not a story of a daughter crying over the mother's fate. Quite opposite. Burnt Sugar starts with the following sentence. I would be lying if I said my mother's misery has never given me pleasure. With that sentence, the scenery and the mood of the novel is set. There are two options the novel can go from here. Either the narrator is a sociopath, quite less explored path in good literature, I might say, or the other path, quite frequently worked on, mothers that caused harm to their children. Because of their personality or life choices, you know, there are many examples of those type of books, starting from Mrs. Bennet in Pride and Prejudice by Jen Austen. Then, just to mention a few more, Charlotte Hayes from Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, there's Mrs. Lisbon from The Virgin Suicide by Eugenides, or Anne Boatwright in Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison or mentioned already Hot Milk by Deborah Levy, the mother's name, I don't remember. Feel free to name a few more in the comments below. And it might have been quite a generic book, this one, if that was just another of many bad mother stories, right? Thankfully though, Burnt Sugar is more interested in the aspect of a constant reshaping of the relationship between the mother and the daughter, its fragile balance and the concept of confinement and memory. This novel opens when the harsh love relationship they managed to sustain over the years is once again in imbalance and in need of reshaping due to the mother's early signs of dementia, Alzheimer. That element of reshaping, of rebuilding the daughter's persona in relation to the mother is already signaled in the epigraph to the novel that reads Mother, I'm so tired, tired of introducing myself to you. Antara, the narrator, is a young married woman living in Punta, India. She's an artist with a turbulent path, mostly to her mother's doing. When Antara was only a few years old, her mother left her father and a comfortable household to move to a local ashram to follow a guru. Ashram is a sort of a spiritual hermitage or monastery in India. In that ashram, Antara was raised by an American woman called Kali Mata, not her mother, because her mother was busy spending time as a partner and an assistant of the guru. Eventually, after a few years, they left ashram, but we will stop here not to spoil you the pleasure of reading and we will move to the themes. Themes. Starting from the most obvious one, 
mother-daughter relationship and the feeling of confinement, as I believe those two are related. Burn Sugar is probably most of all the book about establishing individuality, shaping oneself as an individual being. The epigraph from the beginning of the book that I already mentioned, Mother, I'm so tired, tired of introducing myself to you, showcases the unescapable relationship that mother and daughter are locked in. Antara, hurt by her mother's lifelong opposition to social expectations and norms, shapes her character in opposition to the mother. She creates her persona in relation and opposition to her irresponsible chasing after her whims mother. That opposition is also symbolized by the names of the two, Antara, the daughter, and Tara, the mother. The daughter's name is essentially not Tara, not mother. There are various scenes carrying metaphors where that theme is underlined. One of those is separating the mung beans, a scene when Antara helping her mother with cooking is obsessively separating different color mung beans so they belong to a proper group, proper separate families, as if showing that based on their qualities herself and her mother should not belong to one group of people. That's why when that point of reference, and that being the mother, when that point shifts and changes, and this is what mother's Alzheimer essentially brings, Antara needs to, as in response to that, establish herself anew. There's a scene where the mother watches television and when interrupted by Antara, she looks at her daughter without recognition. And Antara, is shocked by that lack of recognition and then she states something as follows. She didn't know who I was and in that moment I was no one. This is the type of a relationship those two, the mother and the daughter, just like all mothers and daughters are locked in and that introduces another overlying theme, the sense of confinement. The mother, when a young woman tried to escape the confinement of her husband's house, and that was the reason she went to ashram. But her freedom equaled the confinement of Antara. Freedom of the mother equaled the confinement of the daughter. And another theme that was quite interesting was social performance. Antara's childhood was destabilized by her mother's nonconformity to social expectations. Her mother was always chasing her whims, choosing her truth, and putting always herself as the most important. And because of that, she dragged Antara around, destabilizing Antara's life and limiting her chances, Antara's chances, to shape herself in normal circumstances. Therefore, in opposition to her mother, Antara is occupied as an adult woman with her social standing and social expectations. She would repaint the house before the mother of her future husband visits. Then the house that they both lived in, Antara and her husband already, Dilip, is full of mirrors. But the strongest metaphor in that area, I believe, was the story from the USA Zoo, when in front of the public viewing, Captain Zoo Lion bite off the head of his lioness. And that was interpreted by Antara as lion performing for the public, demonstrating the essential aspect of his being, the wilderness. The last theme I wanted to mention is memory. There's an interesting aspect of memory and how it is built also in relation to others or specifically in relation to others, being sort of a medium building social relations. 
there's a broken clock in an office of the doctor Antara drives her mother to. Only the second hand of that clock is moving, not only forward, but also diabolically backwards, as if it was the hand rewriting the past. Not only here and now is affected by Antara's mother's loss of memory, but also the past. Because of her mother's difficulties with memory, Antara is forced to confront certain memories of her own, and surprisingly, Antara's versions of events, Antara's memories, are not challenged only by the mother who is losing her mind and because of that is easily dismissed, but Antara's memories are also challenged by the other members of the family, people with sound minds, like Antara's grandmother. Also, Antara and Dilip, her husband, have different memories related to the first meeting. All of that seems to showcase that memories are something coded and decoded, written and rewritten, constantly changing in social circumstances. Finally, this is just the beginning of the themes one might pick up reading this book. The multitude of them and the amount of metaphors is almost verging on absurd. But Doshi pulls it off. This is the type of a book I am driven to, you know, small in size but full of themes and ideas and moving the mind rather than heart, written with precision, almost clinical precision, very much inwardly focused, sometimes sinister, always very intelligent. It's crazy to think this is just a debut novel. It was being written for eight years though, so maybe that's the reason. This is a novel where every sentence, every scenery, has its meaning and often carries with a direct information additional metaphorical meaning. That's quite unusual. It's a fascinating debut novel. It would be a worthy winner. I will also link quite a few reviews that I really enjoyed, so please have a look down in the box below. Let me know if you read it, what you thought of it, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.